So with a tricked out, creepy looking trailer and like an 80 plus percent on Rotten Tomatoes, I was ready for some serious scares. And I'm still waiting. <laughs> It comes at night. So quick breakdown. It Comes at Night is the new film from A24, the studio that brought us a movie I really liked, Ex Machina. It's about this family living in this post-apocalyptic world, I guess. There's this... I'm gonna assume everybody's okay. I live in an apartment that sounded like someone fell. There's this sickness that has wiped out pretty much everybody, and this family is secluded in a house in the woods somewhere. The house is kept really secure. There's only one way in, one way out. It's this ominous blood red door. Everyone keeps to a very strict set of rules that are laid down by the father, Paul, and for a very good reason. Whatever this sickness is, it is brutal. Within 24 hours, you have signs of it. Within 48 hours or so, you're probably already Dead. There is really no coming back from it. If you're infected, you're gone. And some of these rules are like, if you go outside, you go out in pairs. You always have to boil the water before drinking it. Uh, we don't go outside at night. Well, they do go out, but only if it's an emergency. You're constantly washing up before or after you do anything. You, you, you clean. And a bunch of other rules. One night while the family's trying to go to sleep, Paul hears a loud noise and finds out that there's a guy who's broken into the house. The guy's got a gun. He said he's looking for supplies and water. Paul's not having it knocks the guy out. After finding out this guy has a wife and a son, Paul invites them all to come stay at this secluded house. You know, safety in numbers, that kind of thing. Let me hit pause right here for a second. Why am I laying out this entire scenario and the whole opening of the movie? Because the premise of the movie is actually very interesting. The idea behind the movie is fairly strong. The trailers made it look interesting, and it so is not. Now, I know that A24 is not known for releasing mainstream movie fodder. I mean, Ex Machina was great, The Gift was really good. The exact core underlying message of the movie is not always 100% in your face. You sometimes have to kind of tease that out for yourself. So I like movies that do make you think and make you think outside the box a little bit. Aspects of a lot of these films are left up to the viewer's interpretation, which I like and respect. But this is a movie I kept actually waiting to begin. Every time I thought the movie was going to actually start moving in a direction and really start doing something, it just didn't. It was like the, it was like it was stuck in first gear the whole time. That's an analogy for this movie was slow and uneventful. What is this plague that's killing everybody? I don't know. Why exactly don't they go out at night? I don't know. What is the it from the title that comes out at night? You don't know. What's hiding in the woods that the dog is barking at? It could be anything. I don't know. Who are these people and why should I care? Don't know don't care. This movie just sets up an abundance of unanswered questions that I feel like it just expects the viewer to decrypt or just doesn't care enough to try to actually answer these questions for you. Leaving a story open to interpretation is one thing, but if you leave that opening so wide that the destination I'm trying to find has nothing to do with the breadcrumbs that you left behind for me to try to piece together, things can get messy, confusing, and boring real quick. The handful of scenes that there was some actual dialogue and you see these characters interacting, things start to get interesting. You start to learn a little bit more about them. You start to learn about the world. You start to learn a, a sliver of what's going on. But when those moments are done, again, it just grinds back down to a really slow crawl. I mean, there's even a scene, and some of this was in the trailer, where Paul and his new buddy are being attacked by some other guys. They catch one of the guys, and Paul just shoots the guy in the head. So any other information we could have got is gone. But in all fairness, there are a couple standouts as far as performances go. I didn't say the acting was horrible. I just said the execution was <laughs> Joel Edgerton plays the father Paul father Paul if you're not familiar with Joel Edgerton he really popped onto my radar when Black Mass came out and the gift came out it was creepy as hell in the gift and and there he does have a certain intenseness to what he does and so he in that regards he was good in this movie good as far as his acting was good I didn't really care for his character but maybe that was the point the sickness has taken a lot away from these people a lot away from this guy I mean the opening of the movie is them shooting and burning the grandfather because he has the sickness so he's a little torn up inside and if that was the point he played it to a T he did that well. Kelvin Harrison Jr., who I'm not really familiar with, but I know he was in Roots and he was also in Birth of a Nation. He, his character was a pretty quiet, he plays a 17-year-old kid in this movie. A lot of what's going on with him is, is internalized and he's, he's very quiet. Travis has these reoccurring nightmares and usually has to do about the sickness or his family or people in the house. Like there's a scene in the trailer where it looks like this girl is kissing Travis and when her head comes away, this black ooze is just coming out of his mouth, her mouth onto him. And it's like, that was a dream sequence. But I will say that his character is the closest character you get to caring about a character in the movie. And I say the closest thing because for the most part, I didn't really care about the characters in this movie. I was sympathetic to whatever tragedy was going on. And there were definitely some moments that made you stop and holy crap, but I was sympathetic to the situation not really to the characters. So that just made me feel just kind of disconnected from the story. Then there's the it in It Comes at Night, 
of which there is no it. Or if there is, which they do allude to a few times. You know, something's in the forest and the dog is barking and freaking out. They can't see what it is. And the trailer to the movie definitely gave you the impression that there was some sort of demonic or otherworldly it that the movie is going to revolve around. But basically the it is open to interpretation. The it could be fear, it could be temptation, it could be anger, it could be jealousy, but who knows. Though I'm sure that there are some cinephiles out there and there are some people who love this overly ambiguous movie making where you get to kind of pick and choose and make this part of the story on your own. There are people who like that, people who really like that. I like some of that. But I was personally just kind of bored. I was fighting to stay awake a couple times. And before you hate too much, like I wanted to like this movie. I really did. I went in really excited to see this movie. At the end of the day, I and hopefully we go to the movies to be entertained and see a good story. I want to pay my money and go see the vision that the directors and writers put together to try to entertain the public. I shouldn't be straining this hard before and after the movie to understand what the story or the point was. So as always, I come back to the main question, which is, was I entertained? Entertained. No. No, I was not. I really did want to be. I really, really did. And because I don't like sounding so negative, I've been trying to rack my brain to trying to find something I really liked about this movie. And all I can say is that besides some good acting and some really interesting story premises or premisi, whatever, I really got nothing. I don't like or appreciate misleading trailers and I felt like the the trailer for this movie misled people to the tone that the movie actually had that I understand you're selling a movie it's got to be you know bam 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 really slick but this felt like the tone of the trailer was way up here and the pace of the movie was way down here based on the trailer you go into the movie thinking it's one thing and you watch it and it's something else it feels completely different I not cool when it comes to rating this movie I'm basically gonna rate this movie on a why bother if you don't know what my rating system is let's just say why bother is second from the last. It's why bother and dumpster fire. It's on the fence. It's really on the fence. And I'm sure that there is an audience for this movie. There obviously pe there are people who love this movie. It's getting really high ratings. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I just, let's put it this way. If I was watching this movie on Hulu, just cause I found it randomly, I probably would have shut it off halfway through. No question. But as always, this is just my opinion. What I really want to know is what you think. Have you seen It Comes at Night? Do you agree with me? Do you not? Throw it down in the comments. I really want to hear what you have to say. I think this movie's gonna split some people, so I really do want to know what you think. Thanks again for watching. Sorry to be so harsh on this movie, but stay entertained until next time. And until next time, bye bye. <laughs>